Hey, welcome back everyone. Don here. So let me ask you something. Are drum brakes safe? My Firebird has drum brakes on all four uh, wheels. Is it safe to, to, to use drum brakes? I mean, we did it back in the 60s and 70s, I, I guess. I don't know when the transition actually happened when all cars had uh, disc brakes on the front. But uh, back in the old days, they didn't all have that. So I've got drum brakes on the front of the Firebird and I'm going to tear into them and put new shoes on um, just to make sure that they're uh, good to go for the summer. I have to be careful with these wheels because they're painted. So I have these sockets that I use just for wheels. They're steel on the inside, but they have this plastic sleeve on them that uh, helps protect the wheel uh, from getting all uh, banged up. Kind of neat. I have a whole set of these. So before I can take this drum off, I have to adjust the uh, shoes. Um, a lot of times there'll be a lip that'll happen on the inside edge, preventing the drum from just sliding clear off the shoes. So I've got to, uh, there's a rubber plug back here. I got to take the plug off and loosen the adjuster. So the, so the shoes that are in this orientation will squeeze in and I'll be able to slide the drum right off easy. So it is a little hard to get to. Having the lift makes it a lot easier. So they make these tools uh, specifically for getting up behind uh, and making the adjustments. So never mind the fact that disc brakes perform a lot better than drum brakes do. They're a lot easier to work on too. These are a pain. Let me get this bearing out of here so I don't drop it in the muck. Try and keep it somewhat clean. Voila. So this is that adjuster and you can see it hits on this piece right here preventing it from going backwards and so in order to get this to loosen up from the backside I actually have to come through this hole push this away with something far enough to be able to turn this with the tool that I have here with these um, special brake tools for drum brakes. They're all more or less the same, those tools. They're just different angles and stuff, making it easier for different ones. So here's that, where that lip will build up and keep the drum from sliding off easy. Um, we're not in too, too bad a shape here and uh, my drums are, are still good. These are hard to come by on a car that's 56 years old, but uh, I still can get them. Uh, but they're pricey, so I'm going to keep using these. Um, they're not cracked, they're not worn down excessively, so I should be good. Even the even the shoes are not bad, but I'm going to replace them anyway since I'm in here. More about an inspection than anything else because I haven't been under these hubs in a while. And while I have it apart too, I'll repack the wheel bearings.
reused. Well, all the springs. This is uh, what I'm replacing. These aren't in bad shape though, but it's good peace of mind. So I have thought about upgrading the discs. Uh, they make kits and they're uh, relatively um, affordable, but I don't know. I always had a problem with messing with the originality. Um, although this car is entirely original. Carburetor intake manifold, uh, none of that's original, but um, I, still, I still could put it back if I wanted to. I would go through the hassle of switching this over to, uh, to discs if I were, you know, running this car hard. Um, you know, we take it for ice cream. So I've got a little anti-seize here, which I really hate working with because it's messy. I just want to put a little bit on here so the shoes don't end up getting uh, stuck. It's a lot of uh, a lot of fiddling around to get these in and installed and all that jazz. This is the part where you need extra hands. <laughs> it helps to be ambidextrous. Ambidextrous, ambidextrous. It also helps if you had three hands. Hey. So we're back together. Having these tools makes a difference. Um, having, uh, having this thing specifically, this helps me put the springs on easily, as you saw. Um, this helps me take them off easily. Um, makes all the difference. In the old days, we used to just use a screwdriver and a pair of needle nose. And, uh, you know, we made do. Of course, when we were kids, we just kind of used whatever we could grab out of dad's toolbox, right? So the other thing with drum brakes, when I'm all done, what I'll have to do is take the car for a ride, step on the pedal, because if they're not adjusted correctly, the car will pull to one side or the other, mostly because this is the front. If this were the back, it wouldn't be noticeable as much. Uh, the fronts do most of the stopping. I'll be able to get it close by, by hand. Uh, once it's all together, I can kind of do it by feel. Once that's done, I'm good to go for, uh, for, for a while. I'll repack the bearings, put the drum back on, clean it up, and uh, I still got to do the other side, but I'll spare you that. So my company recently did uh, GPS in all the company vehicles. And, uh, well, that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? It's company assets, it's worth a lot of money. They want to keep track of it. Makes sense. Uh, but one thing I realized that I didn't realize before, because when I drove prior to having GPS, I just sort of stayed with the traffic and did what everybody else was doing. Now that I have GPS, I'm sort of a little more conscious about my speeds and my driving habits and things like that. Not that I was driving unsafe prior to that because I really don't do that, but um, you're just more conscious of it. I'm just more conscious of it now that I have GPS in the car and uh, you know, big brother watching kind of thing, right? So you kind of think about that in any case. So I'm out driving around and I, I think about the GPS and I think about how my driving habits are. And so I stay within 10% of the speed limit. And that is to say I go no more than 10% over um, is, is sort of a, my personal kind of benchmark, you know. I don't know. It's goofy. It's, it's, it doesn't make any sense how if you don't think about it, you stay with traffic and you look down at your speedometer and you're doing 75 miles an hour in a 55 and uh, you think it's okay because everybody else is doing it. But I dare you to drive the speed limit and see how much of a 
of a menace you are to the cars around you, or at least their perception, right? Because they're going to come up and tailgate and, you know, they, people look at me funny and yeah, it's, it's weird. I dare you to try it for a week. Do the speed limit or even if just a little over, forget about what traffic's doing. Pay attention to the speed limit signs and drive the speed limit. I think you'll quickly learn that it's almost not safe to do it that way. That's probably all I want to, I will probably leave it there. If I go any looser, that's to the next uh, slot on the castle nut. That's going to be, that's going to be too loose. So I'm going to go to the next one, which is right there. That should do it. That should do just fine. So you can tell it's a little more work than doing disc brakes. But they're original to the car and so I hate to uh, I hate to get rid of them. I think one of these days I'm just going to suck it up and do the upgrade just for safety's sake, but uh, as long as I keep these in good shape, um, I feel okay about it. But again, I'm not racing around with this thing. I'm just, uh, you know, we're just doing some casual driving. Cruise nights, ice cream, that kind of stuff. So now all I've got to do is go in the back, adjust that adjuster. Uh, star, just that that star nut uh, using one of these fancy gadgets and uh, and this keep spinning this and feeling for a little bit of resistance once I once I start to feel it I'll stop match that with the other side and take it for a ride at that point and hit the brakes to see if I'm pulling on one side more than the other and if I'm pulling to the right then I'd want to tighten up the left side. If I'm pulling to the left, I want to tighten up the right side. So I think I'll stop there for now and see where we end up with a test drive. So if I had to answer the question, at least for myself, do I think uh, drum brakes are safe? I would say, yeah, they do work okay as long as you keep them in good condition. And I'm pretty careful about doing that with this car. There's no doubt that disc brakes uh, perform better. Um, but if I were to put this on uh, the track or, or do any sort of aggressive driving, I certainly would uh, do the upgrade to discs. As soon as the weather cooperates, I'll take it out and uh, do some more fine tuning on the adjustments, uh, making sure that, uh, that, we're, that they're working okay. I don't think I'll have any issues though. Uh, next up for the car though is going to be the coolant. Uh, I've got to replace the heater core and um, while I'm at it right now, I've got no thermostat in it. My thermostat stuck uh, the end of last year when I was bringing it to the gas station to fuel up for the final time before I parked it um, My <laughs> my thermostat stuck closed and uh, I didn't overheat. I almost overheated I kind of caught it because I have a temperature gauge um, But nonetheless, I had to uh, take the thermostat out in the parking lot of the gas station and uh, That allowed me to make it home. So I'll flush the coolant, replace the heater core, put in a new thermostat and uh, all that fun stuff, do some maintenance on the cooling system. 
and uh, who knows from there. I think this year I might even try to uh, do some touch-up paint on the engine. Uh, we'll see how that goes. I appreciate you hanging out, and I uh, hope you have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.